Okay. Are we recording? We are recording. Okay. Mahalo nui, everyone, and thanks for having me on the district webinar here today. Um, again, my name is Greg Horn, and I uh, wanted to share a bit about the Catch a Wave business competition that we put together at the Rotary Club of Hanalei Bay. Um, please feel free, guys, as I'm going through this, jump in with any questions. I'm happy to answer them and, and divert a little bit. I, you know, I see this as a talk story session here today, so by all means, we can keep it casual. But I uh, wanted to share a bit about what, what went on at this event um, and why it took place. As you can see here uh, at this year's event, I think, Ted, actually, I see you and Rick in that picture there. And Monica Ozust is in the picture there as well. And David Dinner in the foreground is a fellow Rotarian. You know, it really became this way for the community to come out and support our fellow entrepreneurs in the community and, and business leaders that are doing so much to employ, you know, uh, great people in the community and create wonderful jobs. So, you know, this was at this year's event, kind of the, the culmination of two years of hard work to get to this point. And, and we look forward to seeing it grow even further. Um, so, yeah, like I said, you know, for me, I believe a, a strong small business community is that rising tide that lifts all boats and really helps to provide better local jobs and, and, strengthen a local economy. Unfortunately, as you folks all know, you know, so much of our economy and goods and things are shipped in from the mainland and from elsewhere around the world. And so the more that we can create and produce things and jobs and, and, and products and services here locally, the better for everyone involved. So that was really one of the key pieces behind this. Plus, for us, it was fun as I, as I got into it more, it, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not exactly a, a rotary historian, so I didn't pretend to know all the history that well. But as I developed this and we started building the first year's program, a number of Rotarians commented to me about how this really comes back to Rotary's founding values of business owners helping business owners ultimately for community benefit, but really rooted in that, that business networking um, framework because of how uh, strong businesses provide those local jobs. So it was fun to come back to that, that foundational value. And so, you know, there's my fellow Rotarian, Ben Gillikin, who he and John Ozust actually were two of our volunteer cameramen um, at the finale this year. They did a wonderful job. Um, later on, I'll show you uh, a, a quick video that we put together with clips from the finale. So if they're if there's any footage that doesn't look too great, you got to rib Ben and John about that. Uh, make sure to make sure to give them heck about it. So, but yeah, it was really amazing too to see the way that my fellow Rotarians jumped in with both feet and and loved this project and continue to. And I was just with Monica about an hour ago, and she's all excited, asking me when we're getting ready for uh, for the 2020 catch a wave and when we'll start that whole process, because it also gave some of my fellow Rotarians this 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 different purpose. And, and this was something that really came through and I'll, I'll talk more about the story in a bit. Um, but so many Rotarians have an amazing wealth of experience and knowledge and expertise from their various careers across all different industries and sectors and things. And to be able to, to use that knowledge and for it to be appreciated and, and encouraged and asked for, and, and like I said, really uh, folks to have the gratitude for them to share that knowledge was a really big thing and why the mentorship has been arguably even over and above the cash prizes and other things, the mentorship provided by Rotarians and other business leaders in our community has been arguably the biggest thing that we've been able to provide to the winners. So this really began with uh, the Kapa'a High School. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar, Kapa'a is a town on the east side here. And the high school a few years ago, uh, one of the teachers, the business class teacher, ran a shark tank competition for her business class. And somehow I was asked to uh, mentor one of the teams. They had heard that of my entrepreneurship background and asked me to jump in and mentor one of the teams and coach one of those teams. And so I did, you know, met with them a couple of times to really hone in their pitch and their business model. Now these were kids coming up with a business idea, right? They weren't actually operating these businesses. Um, although I was encouraging them, like, you've got a really good idea, take this, run with it. Um, but you know, it was really about at the end of the, the end of the semester, they would be presenting to sharks, to a, a shark tank like competition venue. 
Um, and so I had the opportunity to uh, sit in the venue and watch the presentations. And I did this for two years actually. Um, and watching these kids present some really great ideas. I mean, one team, the team that won the second year, I believe that was 2017, it had a really viable business model. And I and a number of other folks, um, you know, some of the sharks and other people in the audience were encouraging them, guys, please pursue this. But the challenge was that these kids were splintering off going to colleges in different parts of the country or the world. And, and so they, you know, it wasn't necessarily on the, on the top of their priority list to also try and start a company. And around the same time, you know, being an entrepreneur myself in the community, I have a number of friends that run businesses both here and elsewhere. And I started hearing it over and over like, man, I could really use some help with accounting or I could really use some help with marketing or, you know what, it'd be awesome if someone had some guidance they can give me like, you know, semi-legal advice. I don't really want to pay a lawyer, but I just need a little kind of guidance on should I be an LLC or a C Corp, simple stuff like that. Um, and it really got my wheels turning. And this is where, you know, I, I was talking with a couple of friends and then went to a rotary meeting and was talking to some of my fellow Rotarians about their various expertise and, and backgrounds from their business careers. And it really sparked this idea of, okay, this is something that we should really find a way to adapt this, the model of Shark Tank in the high school class, but actually do it for business owners here in the community. And so as that idea was germinating around in my dome for some months, uh, you know, it was one of those things hanging out up there. Um, Monica Ozust, who was our president elect, asked me to be on the board. And I had, I had politely declined a board request the year prior. And, um, you know, I, <laughs> I basically have two full-time jobs. I, I wasn't necessarily keen on taking another responsibility on, but I, you know, I love the club. I love my, my fellow Rotarians. And when Monica asked, I said, okay, well, and she coincidentally asked me to be the vocational chair. And I said, okay, well, what if I wanted to do this shark tank competition for actual businesses on the island? She said, great, go for it. Like <laughs> kind of good luck kid, uh, have at it. And so, <laughs> um, so that really sparked the journey. So from there, I, you know, I started kind of quickly thinking about, okay, how can I, how can I do this in the most straightforward way possible? And uh, my training in starting businesses in the past, uh, one of the keys is the lean startup model, which t focuses on how do you build something? So when you are thinking about a business, you have all of these assumptions that you make in your head about the viability. Okay, people will buy it, they'll do X, they'll respond this way, we'll make this much money, et cetera, et cetera. The lean startup model says, okay, take one of those hypotheses and build a minimum viable product. What can you build with the minimum amount of time, energy, and money to test that hypothesis? So even if that's a survey of some kind, some way to test that and say, okay, yes or no, what did we learn? All right, where do we go next? So I decided to kind of use that model. And so we put together a really simple application to say, all right, we're putting together this catch a wave business competition. I don't even know, we might not have even settled on the name of the competition by this point. It was so early on. But anyway, we said, we have this business competition where you'll be presenting to a panel of judges for, and as I put here, competing for monetary and in-kind prizes. Because we had no idea what we were going to be offering to the finalists, but we knew we wanted to first see if we got interest. And so we did that. and you know, did our best to promote it, but it was really coconut wireless style, just reaching out to folks that we knew that were plugged into different groups of business owners here and there. And over maybe a month or two of pushing it out a few times, we got 33 applicants. So that's 33 small business owners on our tiny little island of Kauai here that applied for this competition that no one had ever heard of. They didn't know what they'd be competing for, but it showed this real need in our community for support for these small business owners. So we knew we were onto something. But again, you know, I didn't really know how to go from there. But now having these 33 applicants, we went running around trying to obtain sponsorship. And we did. We got a number of sponsors, including our Rotary Club of Honolulu Bay, uh, to sponsor the competition and provide various levels of uh, monetary and in-kind prizes that we'd be able to offer to the winners. And that was wonderful. But one of the one of the challenges was, okay, we have these 
33 companies. We know we want to narrow this down to six or eight at the finals, excuse me. Um, but how do we do that? So we decided in the first year um, to interview all 33. And we figured we'd pair off and, okay, me and one fellow Rotarian will interview this one and you two will interview that one and you two will interview that one. And it just became a bit of a nightmare because I was trying, my goal in these interviews was even if the business owner doesn't make it to the finals, I want to make sure that they get some value from the conversation. So based on their applications, if we knew they were looking for help with marketing and sales, for example, that was one I was likely to go on because that's my background and expertise. Um, you know, if it was something related to, uh, you know, they need help with hiring and recruiting, we'd make sure that one of my fellow Rotarians that has a bit more expertise in that area was going to be involved in the interview. But all that created a bit of a, a scheduling nightmare as we had, okay, you know, it's me and David Dinner running over here. And then it's me and Monica running over here on a different day at a different time. And it was just a, a bit of a headache that way, <laughs> let alone when some of the folks needed to reschedule. So that was something, again, in the model, in the mode of learning as we went, we definitely learned and I heard loud and clear from my fellow Rotarians that we needed to shore up how we did that uh, for this coming year, this past year, uh, the next time around. And going into the finale, the, the final event that first year, someone asked me, uh, John Ozus actually, I believe, asked me, hey, Greg, what's your goal? Like, how many, how many folks are you looking to have? And I said, you know, honestly, I don't care if nobody shows up. For this first event, my goal is making sure that we have all eight finalists get to present to a panel of five judges, and the judges are able to determine who those three winners are, first, second, and third place, and we're able to give them the prizes, right? If we've done nothing else but that, we've succeeded, right? We've been able to then give give out the prizes and support the small business community in that way. And sure enough, we had about 60 attendees. We were in a small, uh, a small cathedral, a small church here uh, in Lihui on the east side. But we had about 60 attendees show up. And uh, because of our wonderful sponsors, we awarded $5,000 in cash prizes amongst other prizes to our winners. And it was really a successful event. We were really stoked. But we knew that it could get bigger and better the second year. So I want to jump over real quick, show you folks. This was the video we put together uh, going into this, this year's event to explain to folks what the event was and why they should apply and why they should attend. Are you ready to catch a wave for your business on Kauai? The Rotary Club of Hanalei Bay is excited to once again host the Catch a Wave Business Competition, a Kauai-style shark tank. Local businesses will get a chance to win capital for their company, mentorship by veteran successful entrepreneurs, a free membership to Kauai's leading business network, the Kauai Chamber of Commerce, plus more. Businesses apply online, the contest committee picks the top companies to interview, and then the finalists are selected for the competition's finale. The finale is a free public event where each finalist will pitch to the judges and the audience. The Sharks ask questions, provide insight and feedback, and then pick the winners. Being in the competition has definitely given me a lot of local exposure. I've had people come up to me on the streets and seen me in the Garden Island or heard me on the radio or just even had a friend that was in the audience that evening. So I think the growth in the community is excellent. As a business owner, I had my doubts about what I was doing in my business and just being in front of five judges and being able to answer all of their questions really validated what I was doing and that I was on the right path. It's simple to apply. Go to catchawavekauai.com and fill out the application online. All finalists get to exhibit their product and service and network with our local sharks, local business owners, and the community. We believe that a strong small business community is the rising tide that lifts all boats, providing better jobs and a more stable community for our Ohana and Keiki. Tell your Ohana to attend the free finale and cheer on their favorite entrepreneur. Go to catchawavekauai.com to fill out your application and we'll see you at the finale. Mahalo to our wonderful sponsors and all those that support entrepreneurship on Kauai. So as you can see, that's what we did. Um, 
really, it was a big deal for Kelly. So you saw Kelly in the video there uh, who won that first year's event. She won the 2018 event. Um, she's a mother of two th running a thriving business. And yet literally as soon as we had awarded her the prize in that first year's event, she came running up to me after, gave me a big hug, tears in her eyes, was so excited to be recognized in this way by the community and said, let me know what I can do to be involved. I love this. I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to apply and do it and be involved in next year's competition. And sure enough, she was, you know, she, this was something a couple folks have asked me about this and how many Rotarians we recruited as part of this effort. And, you know, I, I like to remind folks, it's not always about, are we recruiting members though? That's important. And I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that. Um, but in this case, Kelly doesn't necessarily have the time to be a Rotarian herself, but she was involved in a, in a very strong way. She not only sat for uh, a couple hours while we shot that, you know, the video footage we needed for that video, but she also came onto two different uh, radio interviews with me promoting the competition, um, did, a, did another Garden Island, our local newspaper interview to promote the competition. So she really jumped in. She even, you know, was going to be heavily involved in, in making sure that her social media was going to be, uh, you know, she was going to put it out on her social media to make sure folks got involved. And then she even, Ron Margolis talked her somehow into coming and selling uh, tickets at one of our events, a totally separate event, a, a St. Patrick's Day event. And she jumped in and jumped in like a fellow Rotarian would. And so, you know, in, in my mind, she's a Rotarian in spirit, right? And even if she's not a member per se, um, the fact that she's serving her community in these different ways shows that we're doing the right thing. And she said to me multiple times that she frankly had no idea what Rotary does. She's maybe in her late twenties, maybe early thirties. You know, she had no, no idea what Rotary is or does. And, and this really gave her a totally different perspective on what Rotary does in the community. So that was huge, right? Reaching a totally different demographic. And like I said, this year, uh, you know, I gave examples of how Kelly and I were out in the community promoting the event on radio, you know, radio interviews, newspaper interviews, putting things like that video out on social media and promoting it in different ways. It was a bit easier because we had the momentum through the coconut wireless of the event last year. I had a number of folks come up after the first year's event and say, Oh my God, I can't believe I just heard about that. I can't believe I didn't hear about it beforehand. Like, why didn't you tell me? And I said, well, I sent you an email, but you know, they, they were so excited to then come to this year's event. So this year we got 44 applicants, which was huge. I mean, just any, any increase over what happened that first year was going to be tremendous for us. And, and clearly it worked. It was a, a tremendous, tremendous increase for us. And we were so excited. And the caliber of businesses that were applying really stepped up a notch. I mean, it was, it was quite impressive. Um, this year we decided, we, we decided to only interview 18 of those 44, not all 44. And we made them come to us. We basically, you know, we learned from the first year, right? And that's what the, the lean startup model is. It's all about learning and iterating, learning and iterating. And so we uh, just set it up really succinctly. We said, okay, interviews are happening on this one day in these time slots, pick a time slot. And we went through, it was like a speed dating session for all of our interviews. We had them going back to back to back to back to back uh, and got all the interviews done in, in one afternoon. So as I said, we streamlined the processes, you know, right after that same day, after we interviewed those 18 that we had chosen as the semi-finalists we chose our eight finalists that day so now i want to show you briefly the video we put together for the from the event so this is the wrap-up video from the final event Aloha. welcome to the second annual catch a wave business competition Putting this competition together last year was a dream inspired by many wonderful people in this community and many of my heroes around the world. This event was created by the Rotary Club of Honolulu. Rotary is an international service organization that was founded over 100 years ago by business leaders coming together to help each other and ultimately help the community better. This year, we had 44 companies apply for the Catch a Business competition. That's 44 local companies on our tiny little island. 
44 brave leaders. And I'm proud to say that each and every one of them is looking to make our community and ultimately our planet better in some way. My intention is to revolutionize the way our community approaches their wellness by making sustainable and effective products accessible. Everything we offer is healthy for our bodies, but we also choose to look at things from an innovative angle. B Team has an official nonprofit dedicated to preserving feral honeybee species. And Kelly was the CEO of my company. Now I taste the chocolate. She actually is a certified chocolate taster. It's a real thing, you can look it up. <laughs> More stuff, more staff, more staff, even a bigger space, more space, that's where you come in. <laughs> it's not just chocolate, it's an experience. <laughs> right, so that people can bring me donations, they go to the thrift shop, I source from the thrift store. Thrift store also helps the community um, find affordable things. The South Side has no thrift store, and it's difficult. <laughs> I wanted to provide healthy, fresh, and fast food to our working community. There's enough, there's enough business on the island for everybody to grow and get along, I think. Yeah. I didn't know how much competition you ever have. There's always room for somebody to know something about it. Yeah. The competition always makes us better. Yeah, that's I love sewing and design. I got my first machine when I was seven and sold my first Aloha shirt at the age of 10. I went on to do custom work and costuming for local productions. I knew that there had to be a different way to educate, so I decided to start my own. I knew I wouldn't be able to change the system from within, so I decided to create my own. I knew our students in Hawaii deserved more, and I knew that we had the talent here to be able to express that. What does robotic mower from Husqvarna work do? Um, I'll allow you not to have to mow your yard anymore. And then I'm going to go into a little bit about how I came up with the idea and then how I was able to convince Husqvarna to give me the dealership on the ice. Eight great companies have competed and the judges have somehow come to a decision. I give them a lot of credit. Third place goes to Shannon Hiramoto of Machine Machine. <laughs> Second place goes to Christina Zimmerman of Homeschool Now. The Catch Away Business Competition winner for 2019 is Aloha Ida Juice Cafe. So as you can see, it was a whole lot of fun. I, I had a blast. Um, and we had over 200 folks attended. Uh, Ted was there in the room, many of my fellow Rotarians from the Rotary Club of Honolulu Bay, and, and the community was a buzz about it for, you know, like a week or so leading up to it for sure. And then for, for weeks afterward, everyone was so excited about how the event went off and, and how, how much they were excited to learn about these businesses that they had never heard of right here in our tiny little community. You know, it was amazing how many folks had never heard of so many of these businesses. As the, the winner, Michelini of Aloha Aina Juice Cafe was awarded $7,500 cash for her business, um, which by the way, we do via reimbursements. So it's not that we just give her a check. Uh, the big check was for show. Uh, we say, okay, you have this kitty in our Rotary Club Foundation of $7,500 make a business purchase and then send us the receipts and we'll reimburse you, uh, which actually just recently Misha used the whole of her 7,500. She was so excited. They got a, a brand new cooler in her juice cafe that she was able to put like grab and go sandwiches, which is what she had been hoping for. And she also got a free first year lease in a new shopping center that's coming here in Kilauea, um, which she was over the moon about. It was amazing.
we also, to the top three this year, we didn't do this the first year, frankly, because we didn't think of it. Um, but this year we were excited and, and really stoked to give honorary first year Rotary membership to our top three winners. Um, I know, and, and Ted, I'd love for you to chime in what it's been like uh, with Shannon, but it, it, you folks may have seen Shannon Hiramoto of Machine Machine. She is an amazing business model, by the way, where basically she brings, she sources materials from thrift shops and ultimately wants to have her own thrift shop and garage sales and other secondhand means. And then her and her team of seamstresses will recreate those garments into either new garments, bags, other different ways to kind of upcycle those, those things that would have maybe gone to a landfill otherwise. And so her, her business model is amazing. And she's been so excited. She just sent me an email recently how excited she's been to connect with Ted. She's on the South Shore. So she's with the Poipu Rotary. And Ted, I, I don't know if you have a minute to chime in about Shannon. Yeah, we were delighted to um, reach out to Shannon when she won the third place prize. Uh, she lives and works near Rotary Club of Poipu Beach. And, uh, you know, she's a, a busy young mother with a lively four-year-old um, running a full-time business. So she doesn't have a lot of time to spend with us coming to meetings and doing some of the traditional things. Uh, but she has spoken at a club meeting. She's participated with us in some projects. Uh, and we've had members go and support other things that she's doing in the community at her shop. Uh, at a local shopping center, at an art gallery. Uh, so uh, it's been a, a developing relationship and one that we hope um, we can continue to help bring her into the fold and, and have her be a full-time active member after this year. Um, I also think it has benefited the club a little bit um, from our, our public image that uh, she's associated with our club and visible in our social media and our publicity. Uh, and I, I think that can helped contribute to us uh, recently inducting a couple of new members to the club who are under the age of 40 years old, uh, which is a, a, a big development for that club. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for linking us up with Shannon. And um, hopefully we can all brainstorm together other ways to leverage uh, this program as ways for, to help us in membership development moving forward too. Yeah, thank you, Ted. And, and absolutely. I mean, you know, again, like I said, for many of these folks, you know, particularly those that are moms, we have a few, Misha, who's the winner this year is a single mom uh, with three kids and, you know, obviously running this full-time thriving business. You know, it's tough time-wise. They're, they're uh, generally strapped for time, but when, they have the opportunity to serve and to give back, and particularly if it's events that are on the weekends when their, their shop's not open or something, they love to give. And, and the, the way someone put this to me was, you know, we look at things like Rotaract and Interact that kind of help those young people, those early years that we tee up and get them excited to things like Ryla and other ways of getting folks excited about Rotary. And then there can be a bit of a gap before it's kind of later in someone's career uh, or when they're retired that generally they, they move into the stage of Rotarianship and being a member. So this can help to kind of bridge that gap in a lot of ways, this opportunity for, you know, generally small business owners are in their twenties, thirties, maybe forties, especially in these early days of a new business. Um, and so, you know, even if they're not able to become a member, as I said, the way Kelly responded, uh, and wanted to jump in this year and, um, you know, and, and Misha as well, uh, this year's winner said she's ready to do any, everything she can to promote the event next year and make sure that it's a huge success. And as I mentioned briefly earlier, you know, one of the things that's been, we did this the first year and again this year, and it's arguably the most important thing that we're doing for these business owners is giving them mentorship, giving them guidance, asking them, what do you, excuse me, what do you need help with? What are you struggling with? Where do you see are the levers that you can turn to really grow your business and take things to the next level? And so they tell us, yeah, okay, it's, it's sales, it's marketing, it's recruiting, it's fundraising, whatever it might be. And that's where our, our fellow Rotarians thrive, right? They're so excited to be able to jump in in some way that's really making an impact, right? They're, they're able to really make a difference in each of these companies quickly. You know, it doesn't take a ton of time for each of these mentorship relationships. This year, 
uh, we gave, uh, and it was frankly a bit arbitrary, but we said, okay, to the winner, uh, we awarded 20 hours of mentorship, second place, 10 hours of mentorship and third place, five hours of mentorship. And as they've needed it, they've continued to, you know, ask for what they need. We check in every now and again and making sure they're growing and, and getting all the help they need. And Kelly, the first year winner, who you saw in that first video, is still working with one of her mentors now. Uh, they just developed a bond, really hit it off. They were able to help each other. Um, and so it's been a really fruitful relationship. So that's, you know, to be able to, to do that in such a way that has so positively impacted Kelly's business, it warms my heart. It's been tremendous. And as I said, you know, even if they don't become Rotarians, their perspective of Rotary has changed forever. Um, you know, unfortunately, so many of these folks, frankly, don't know what Rotary is, or they have some, you know, kind of closed minded view based on what they've heard in the past of what ro Rotary might be. Um, this gives them a totally different frame for what Rotary can be in their community and how it can impact their own lives. As I said, Misha's jumped in to uh, volunteer for next year's event, which we're really excited about. And so, you know, now it kind of came to this place where as I was preparing for this year's event, I would regularly go to our Rotary meetings that happen here in Princeville on the North Shore of Kauai and just share with my fellow Rotarians about what's happening, where we were in the process. Okay, applications are closed. We got 44 applicants. Now we're getting ready to do the interviews, et cetera, et cetera. And we get a lot of visitors because we have a beautiful venue where we have our events. Uh, so we get visiting Rotarians from all over the world. And time and again, as I would share about Catch a Wave and what we were doing, I'd have visiting Rotarians coming up to me saying, oh my God, this, this project sounds amazing. You know, we want more younger Rotarians like you, Greg. It'd be great to bring this to our club in some way. And so it really got my wheels turning that, okay, maybe there's some way to do this. Maybe there's some way to actually help these, these Rotarians run an event like this elsewhere. Um, and so this year, what I did was I made it a point to one way or the other document and every step and process along the way, everything that the team and I did to put this year's event together, I just wrote it down because I knew if nothing else, it would help this year and successive years within my own club to say, okay, you know, we need to do marketing. Here's what we've done in years past here. You know, my fellow Rotarians that are volunteering to help this year, you take this piece, you take this piece, you take this piece. And, you know, it's all laid out what you need to do. It just makes it easier for everyone to have that clear, concise, those steps in place. But I also figured that it might help us to then be able to share it with other Rotary clubs anywhere that want to put on an event like this. So I'm willing and able to help uh, Rotary clubs anywhere around the world to catch a wave of their own. So I'd like to say thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And I'm happy to open up to any questions you folks may have. Uh, Greg, what, if a club was looking to do this on their own, what's the level of effort, the number of people hours involved and money commitment that they would need to think about? Pulling great question. Out? Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, you know, there's, there's, two ways that I see doing this. Um, one is kind of the, the do it yourself. And the other is uh, myself and my team help do it for you. Um, so the first would be, you know, a, a team, a club is ready and willing to jump in and, and do as much of the legwork as they can possibly do to make it happen. Um, and that we humbly ask it's a thousand dollars to put that together where we are just, just basically give you all of the steps that are needed for you to follow and go ahead and do it. Um, and so that on a man hours, you know, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, people hours um, standpoint, it's tough to say, it's actually something I should take a closer look at. Um, but I would say oh, total, it's probably about maybe 30 to 50 hours. I know it's a wide range, but somewhere in that neighborhood, uh, you know, all told, I had a committee of uh, eight to 10 Rotarians these past two years. So that gives you an idea of how many folks and most of the, uh, much of the heavy lifting has been on my part to kind of uh, run it and put it together. And we'd have regular meetings, keeping everything together. Uh, the marketing in the community has been a big piece that 
that everyone has done and then all the interviews and then really setting up that finale event. Um, so it's not tremendously time intensive, save for uh, kind of the one person championing it. And then the other option um, is uh, uh, $3,000 for me to run as much of it as I can for you. So basically helping to coordinate all the efforts, putting out all the messages to the small business owners in your community, um, coordinating everything from the interviews to, you know, once you have a venue in place, connecting with the right timing of things and, and um, advertisements and things like that to make sure I'm, I'm taking as much of it off your plate as I can. That's great. Um, and it, it sounds like, uh, you also saw a lot of benefit to your club in terms of Rotary's public image? Very much, very much. Like I said, uh, particularly in this kind of, I'll call it 25 to 40 age range to, to generalize for a moment. Um, you know, many folks, many, many of my peers just don't know what Rotary is, or they think it's, uh, you know, just a bunch of old guys that get together to, to drink together or something. I, I don't know what they think. Um, but you know, it's, uh, to give the community this opportunity to see Rotary in a totally new light in a way that is supportive of things that they care about. Um, you know, my, so I'm a millennial, I'm kind of in the tip of the spear of that generation. And uh, the unfortunate reality of many of my fellow millennials is, you know, kind of how does this benefit me as a mindset of a lot of folks? Um, well, when you're now presenting a way to help, these folks with a business to help these young people with their own business, whether they're thinking about starting something or they have started something, or you're seeing a fellow millennial get a bunch of help with their business. Now all of a sudden it gets much more real. It's like, wow, okay. These folks, these rotary folks do amazing stuff. Um, and I've, you know, now since a couple of years of doing this event, I run into folks that I don't know. I'll see them at a farmer's market or something. And they'll say, Hey, you're that, you're that rotary guy with the catch away of thing, right? And I'll say, yeah, they're like, Oh my God, that was so cool. You know, again, just that simple reframe for them of what rotary is and that it's cool uh, is something that's tremendous. Right. Uh, and I know you and uh, Nalani and I have also done a little brainstorming of how we might leverage this program for membership development. Um, are there ways that we could, even get some of the participants to uh, form a new Rotary Club that would be a, a non-traditional Rotary Club um, that um, adapts to their needs and of limited time and family involvement and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I, Nalani, anything you want to add or ask Greg on the webinar about that? Well, first, congratulations, Greg. Great job. And Thank you very the enthusiasm much. of your community. And uh, as Ted mentioned about getting the word out, the, the image part of Rotary is, is fantastic. And uh, I look forward to having more talk story with the two of you on how we can um, bring all these people together with what they have learned and teach others in the community. And uh, I, I truly believe Rotary today is looking for people uh, who would like to be a part of the community and give back, but is unable, be it financially, be it time or everything else. But the, what they do have is that experience of mentorship that they can really teach and share with others. So hopefully we'll find a place for them is that right, Ted? I think there is always a place for people like that we could use. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think we just have to uh, look at new models of Rotary, yeah. around satellite clubs, passport clubs, uh, or some hybrid of those kinds of things that exactly. may, may meet the needs of these entrepreneurs better and then leverage, as Greg's been doing in this program, the vast experience of uh, older Rotarians to help be subject matter, matter experts and mentors. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's been uh, one of the things for other folks who may watch this later for you, Naomi, is, uh, you know, that Nalani, Ted and I talked about was also that opportunity to have something like an e-club where, you know, maybe folks are 
they get together once a month for a Powhana kind of thing, uh, you know, or just having that opportunity to, to not even necessarily have that, that time commitment, but then they have the opportunity to serve in the community. You know, we as other clubs in that local area can say, okay, you know, we're doing trash pickup this Saturday that we do on the highway once a month, or uh, we've got this event happening down at Ted's club and, you know, let's all go show support. And it's something on the weekends outside of business hours that, that folks like that can be able to jump in on. I agree. Uh, what, one other thought, obviously the uh, Hanalei uh, Bay Club kicked this off and they ran it as a project of their club, um, but it, it seems to me it also could be a collaboration of a, of a group of clubs in a particular area uh, who want to run this program uh, in their area and um, see about forming a new club or getting some new people involved in their area as well. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a nice little collaboration there, Ted, you and I, um, and the folks at the Kauai Rotary Club out of Lihui as well jumped in uh, and at the very least offered that honorary first year membership uh, for the winner. So that was, you know, we were really grateful to you, Ted, and your club there for that. Um, and so things like that, right, it just kind of sparks and, and provides this opportunity for that, for that shared work. Great. Well, I'm, I'm sure as others uh, have a chance to uh, watch the replay of this webinar and, and talk with you individually, um, that they'll have other questions and ideas. But um, I thought this was a, a really useful program, not only for your club, but for the whole island of Kauai. Uh, and as you say, a model that even clubs on the mainland uh, started to latch on to and say, hey, that would really help us that we wanted to share this with all of our colleagues in the district and see if it might be a, a spark and a model uh, to help all the clubs in our district. Totally, yeah, we've had, I've spoken with some folks at clubs um, inland on the mainland that are on the coast that are like, yeah, we might need to change the name because we don't have many waves here in Kansas, but uh, you know, <laughs> still the model can prevail. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just say for anyone, uh, watching the replay, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, my email is greghorn27, so it's G-R-E-G-H-O-R-N-27 at gmail.com. Happy to talk more about it. Hi, Greg. This is Naomi. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you could put your uh, contact information on that last slide, but that was good that you added that um, because I think people will want to um, reach out and, and contact you. You know, on Oahu, there's a, um, uh, SBA puts on this um, kind of a master's program where people will um, apply to get into this emerging leaders program. And some of the things that they um, cover are uh, the financial pieces. And, and so we have a lot of bankers and financial analysts and maybe that could be one of the mentors on how to read a financial statement or uh, ratios. Um, I guess talk, talking from my banker's hat, um, that really helps uh, entrepreneurs because they're creative people, not analytical. And so sometimes it really helps to talk to a banker about how to apply for a loan or how to read a financial statement. How do you talk to your um, CPA? So maybe that could be added on to the program. Yeah, that's tremendous. And, uh, you know, we thankfully we've had uh, a couple of folks involved uh, both last year, one of our uh, one of our judges last year, and then he jumped in to be a mentor again this year, uh, has experience with some small business administration loans and things like that. So he's been tremendous for those folks that uh, that have thought about going the, the fundraising route. And yeah, it's definitely something we could grow more of and do more of because it is such an important piece of growing a business. So thank you. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. One more Good thing. Job. About, oops, sorry, that will be. One more thing I thought about is what you just did, your program. That is something you can feature in the magazine, The Rotarian. They're always looking for projects, something unique and different to share. So I just wanted to share that with you. Oh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. Maybe what I'll do is, uh, if it's okay with Naomi, I'll. I'll grab the link to this recording and send it off to them so they can get an idea. 
Absolutely. Um, I'll uh, convert it to YouTube tonight and send that over. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, I think we're good. Should I stop the recording now? Yeah, I think so. I will stop share. Hi, Naomi. Hello. Yes. Yeah. This is Roz. This, the, this is incredible information.